Ok. Oh, hola, ¿qué tal? Oh, ¿Qué dicen mis nuevos amigos? Oh, ok. Oh. Estamos haciendo presentación en, 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 en español o en inglés? English is. Oh, thank goodness. I spent all weekend preparing for it in Spanish. I didn't realize I could do it in English. Oh my goodness. Well, that's going to make this much more entertaining because uh, it would not have gone well the other way. Uh, thanks for letting someone from the Arpe tribe up here. That's nice, huh? Oh, we got some Arpeers. Good. Arpe, Arpe, Arpe. Right. Good. It's a good crew. Um, they've asked me to share a few words on two topics. Stable coins and LATAM from Reserve's perspective as we've been looking at this for the last four years. Uh, and some of the impacts of our pay. Some of the things that we've done recently. And so I thought I would start with an on-theme tweet. This was a tweet from some of the, I think it was the VP of product at Coinbase just the other week. And he had this it's, an, it's a good question. Many people in Argentina immediately convert salaries to U.S. dollars and put them in lockboxes. Is this true? People put them in lockboxes, dollars in lockboxes in Argentina? It's true. We know that, yeah. Uh, why isn't there a simple paved path for them to get them into USDC and on an L2, lent into DeFi? First of all, there's like three parts to that sentence that it's quite long. Can you imagine actually creating a wallet, understanding what an L2 is, understanding what DeFi is, and then maybe making a yield on your, on your stable coin. So there's a lot to this. And there's, this might suffer from a little bit of Silicon Valley bias right here. It's, it's a common thing. So what I thought we would do, and we actually we probably have a lot of crypto, focus, crypto enthusiasts in this room. And you may actually even be a little disconnected from the realities. So what I wanted to do was get some quick footage outside of some people trying to open a wallet and get their money on L2s. I ran out of time. I didn't get to do that. But it would paint a good picture. And I thought, okay, well, what is the second best way to paint a good picture? And I realized, we've been, we've been tinkering with this lately, there's no one more qualified to paint a good picture of how hard this is than Dolly. AI knows everything. So we typed into Dolly, here we go. We, we asked Dolly the question, paint us a picture of a head of household in Argentina, that's a little, little blurry, sorry, um, trying to save their Ethereum private key and transfer stable coins to an L2 for lending in DeFi, and let's do it, let's do it, uh, you can see me typing this real time, let's do it in the style of mm, a board eight, a board eight, board eight Yacht Club NFT. So... Painting a canvas here, we'll hit generate. I didn't know how to spell a yacht apparently, I don't have one yet. I had to fix that word, okay good. Um, so here we go. Let's see how good this comes out. How hard is it to open a wallet? Here we go. Okay, great. Some of these actually look like apes. Uh, you can, but you can see this. Like on the left here, it's a little difficult with this resolution. This, these people are miserable. Look how miserable they are trying to do this. That's awful. This person, he's crying. He's crying trying to open a wallet. Look how hard this is for him. Dolly gets it. Here's some, here's some, here's some more some close-ups of how that actually came out. because Get a better resolution. So it's hard. We know this. So good tweet intent. Good tweet intent. It does matter in LATAM. We know this. There are cycles of restrictions for how you can use your money. How, much, how, much, how many dollars can you buy in Argentina per month right now? What is it at? Somewhere between zero and 200? You're at zero, you're at 200. You need to learn from these guys. They say 200. You might be able to get a little bit more. Um, the, uh, it's zero. Well, the point. And then uh, the one we all know, the one that Reserve's been working on for a while, monetary policies that uh, strip the value of our earnings inflation. We're on board for this. Sound money. Sound money for everyone. Uh, and maintaining the value of 
what you've earned, it should be borderless. And even today, I think we're pretty close. So, spend a few minutes on a model. Four puzzle pieces. Uh, this is, I think, the good state, or this is the state of where we are uh, in, um, in stablecoin and sound money adoption. The first group is convenience and ownership in your custody. So, let's give you, let's, go, let's, let's do a little, um, uh, I don't know what you call this, left, left bar, right bar, where the left side is complex custody. Unfortunately, complex custody is pretty synonymous today with censorship-resistant ownership, and simple UX custody is pretty risky for your own ownership of your funds. And so what you might see, what we kind of were talking about, you heard from um, the Moby guys, like um, externally owned accounts on, on Ethereum, MetaMask, even smart contract wallets like Argent. I mean, maybe, maybe we're in the thousands here that are actually using these days. I was actually just talking with one of our Argentina, um, uh, one of our Argentina developers, and just heard, just heard of him and his friends about smart contract uh, wallets uh, in Argent. Very fresh. Um, um, and then, I, I bet we're probably in the hundreds of thousands uh, in LATAM that are actively keeping their funds uh, on exchanges from, from, from the dialogues that we're having. And then, I do think, especially over the last 12 months, crypto banking, DeFi banking, I bet it's hit the millions. I bet we're at the millions on crypto banking. The simple UX custody, it's riskier ownership. But I think that's where we are. And so, there's another piece to this, though. We've actually seen examples of this. Payoneer, Uphold, pulling out of Venezuela in the last year or two. These risks are real. These, very, these risks are very real. Second piece, the convenience of the on-off ramps. We'll do another, we'll another left-right diagram. So decentralized, again, pretty complex UI, and, and centralized happens to be much simpler. So peer-to-peer -peer networks. Anybody use Binance peer-to-peer? -peer? It's a pretty simple one. That's probably the best that we have out there, a few hands. That's probably for us, um, or those that are a little bit more advanced. On the far right, this is, this is, this is too new in LATAM. There's, there's few banking APIs. There's very few, there's, like the plat of LATAM is just at like, a Series B funding. It's so difficult to do direct banking connections still there. The majority of how people have to on and off ramp in LATAM are what we call hard landings. You have to set up a legal entity, um, set up your own bank accounts there, and then you can have consumers go to their banking app and send funds to your, to your, to your company's uh, funds. So that's probably the majority. Reserve sits here most of the time. The Uber for peer-to-peer. -peer. We've actually taken, if you haven't used Re the Reserve app, I didn't get a video. There might have been one in the, in the earlier 30-minute video, but um, call it the Uber for peer-to-peer -peer because we do the peer-to-peer the, the -peer matching for you. Someone wants to uh, load or unload um, their local currency, we find someone, a liquidity provider, that's willing to take that money for them. And we, we, we abstract away all of those trust issues um, or the complexity of figuring those things out. You have a pretty easy experience, but it's still not great. It's pretty complex. Okay, third one. This one's kind of fun. This one's fun. Yield to consumers. Getting the yield to consumers, not the banks. This is starting to happen. This is kind of one of the magic things here in uh, stable coins and DeFi. So you have, I'm going to use a different, different one. We're going to go with unclear asset management on this side and transparent asset management on the other side. And so if you're on on-chain, lent into DeFi, you know exactly where your funds are. You know exactly where yours are. Uh, maybe, maybe you've bought some, some primitives on, an, on, a, on a centralized exchange. They're not in your, they're not in your custody, um, but, you, but, you won't, but you have those. Most of it today, like, uh, like if you look at an FTX that just says, hey, we're going to give you 5% yield, and you don't know what's really happening behind the scenes. Pretty unclear asset management. That's what you get. And then I think the same thing is happening, or actually, I think there's another level of thing happening over here, which is some of the crypto banks, the ones that are growing the quickest. It's a bit of a yield war going on. What's a yield war? So when you're in places, high inflation, when the inflation's like 50%, does a 2% yield really matter? Nah, not really. Extra 2% for the risks, probably not. So it's pretty, it's pretty unattractive, anything under, probably under that. But I think if you start getting over here, 
when you start getting up to the 10% pluses, especially for a lot of us, when yield gets up to 5, 10%, you can actually grow your savings. You can start growing your savings faster than you can via earnings, via those yields. It becomes like, well, it's almost like a little nectar or something. Do we have any nectar? I could use some nectar right now. I thought I had some good ones. So th here's the thing. Nevin's talked a little bit about this at, at uh, the BitConf 2019. Uh, he actually used the line, and a lot of innocent people could lose their money. And it happened in May of this year. We actually did a poll within our team at Reserve right after the UST collapse. And even within Reserve, where we know and talk a lot about sound money, 20%, 20% of the Reserve team had either, yes, I lost a meaningful amount because I put too much money in UST, or no, but I know someone who lost a lot. And I think we actually, we might have even escaped a much worse situation with how fast UST was growing in LATAM and the word of mouth, that if, that if that went on for another month or six, it could have been a lot worse. These numbers could have been a lot worse. These pressures are, these pressures are really real. So we have to watch out for unclear asset, asset management versus transparent asset management. I will say, as we're talking about our tokens here, I think the exciting part, maybe about the future of RPay and other, and other applications, when you have R token backings, when you have very clear understanding of what's in those R tokens, you can see what the yield is and you'll be able to tell um, what's going on. So I think that's going to be a great next step coming in the future. All right, last piece. Spendability. This one's easy, this one's fast. I have no left or right for you, but spend them stable coins. Spend them stable coins. While the ecosystem grows, I think the rush right now is to, is, to, is to utilize the open networks, right? So I think these were all press announcements from the last three months. Ripio, crypto card. Wenbit, crypto card. Visa, getting in, in the action with probably a lot of different players. This one was like from today or recently. FTX, crypto cards, LATAM. So this fourth big piece, this wave is coming. Some of us might already have these. Um, but I think when you put these together, this is what the adoption curves looks like. Kind of started here a couple years ago. What that says down there is thousands, the self-custody side of things. It's probably still about that. The exchanges came in, made it a little easier, but the UX is pretty complex. Too many things to do. But I did think we made it to the hundreds of thousands there. And then we crossed the UX chasm. I think this is what's happened in the last 12 to 18 months. A lot of these DeFi offerings through CeFi has got us into the millions. We're into the early adopters now. We're at that stage. And so over the next 12 to 36 months, we're going to see those four puzzle pieces coming together. And I think we're going to, take, we're going to, be, we're going to start seeing the tens of millions with those puzzle pieces coming together just the right way. And we're going to, we're going to be past the early adopters. We're going to, be, we're going to start seeing the majority. This, this, this could be... This could be the majority. But we have those risks that we just showed and we just talked about. I think there's going to be a lot at stake with how, how adoption happens. We talk about that a lot within reserve. Okay, moving on. Impact of our pay. Wow. Look at those numbers. Look at those numbers. That's great. We are over a million installs. Almost entirely organic. We, we, we did a little bit of ad spend once. It was like, this is silly. Let's just, let's just keep it going organically. Um, 4.8, 10,000 plus reviews, five countries. I'm going to go through some use cases, some of the things that are actually happening. So we, I think it was like Thursday, uh, a few days before, Devin, or Thomas was like, hey, come say something about Arpe. Cool. Well, our, um, our awesome research team, I was like, hey, let's, what, what, what are our customers doing like literally right now? So we sent out a push notification. Got a whole bunch of them, like they love talking about what they're up to. Got a whole bunch of them responding and, we're gonna, we, and then we broke it up into the different use cases. The different things they're doing with Reserve probably right now. First one, savings. This is, I don't know if that's big enough, it's good. Um, this is Fabi, I, I highlighted, uh, her, her, her core excitement. I can have a digital wallet in dollars without the need to have an offshore account. This is the core of it, how hard it is to get a digital dollars account and how easy the reserve makes that possible. Who else we have? Patricia, uh, 
It has helped me so that my money is not devaluing back, backing it up in reserve, and it's easy to withdraw. Those on-off ramps that reserve offers are quite critical. Let's see. Oh, I forgot about this. This is, this is some data we pulled not too long ago. Uh, within your first 30 days, about t- day 10 to 30, the average person in reserve holds about $14 in their wallet. By month two, the average active customer is holding $23. And by month six, there's up to $41. So I think there's two, two really cool things happening here. One, people, are, people trust reserve. You, you, start, you, you see this foreign thing and you build trust. Two, people now are having the opportunity to actually start building their savings. And these are big numbers for someone in, in, many, in many places um, in, in Latin America. I mean, even in the U.S., I think the number's like most, most people in the U.S. can't actually uh, afford a $300 um, emergency. And in, in, in somewhere like Venezuela, $41 could be quite significant. So people can get there. People are getting there by month six on average. That's pretty cool. Second big area, remittances. We're starting to see a lot of this, and we start to see a lot of other, a lot of other areas. So this is um, Diana from Colombia. Uh, she saves time and money and tells everyone to use it. That's pretty cool. Uh, what else does she say in there? Uh, low commissions. That's great. Luis. Oh, I love this one. Look, first of all, how adorable is his daughter? Yeah. Uh, made it easier for me to save money to be reunited with my wife and daughter. What? Like, and then, and then continued. He, he told us this on Thursday. And then he continued to make it easy for me to send money to my mother and family after they moved. He's now in Peru. He lives in Peru. I don't know. I, I, I couldn't say. But, uh, yeah, maybe Venezuela. Um, but beautiful story. Um, and then Emily here. Uh, like, she, she, she spoke of some of the issues that she had with other situations. Waiting a whole day to receive money. Some sort of, like, reliability is a problem. But when they have reserve, it's convenient. It's fast. All right, next case, payments are awesome. Let me see if I can get this again. You've probably already seen this. If you haven't, the same videography team that's got two-thirds of the space in here also captured this footage uh, a little while back. Of did we, did we play this earlier today or no? Okay, okay, we don't need to play it anymore, but just payments everywhere. We have thousands every day. Many thousands of transfers are happening peer-to-peer um, or, or in merchant services like this. Next one. Can I click again? Merchant banking. I bet you guys were surprised to see this one. Oh, what? Yeah. Maria y... Ooh. Yatmilia? Yatmili? Yatmili? Yatmile, gracias. Uh, but look at this. This is oh, first, Her and her uh, mother-daughter uh, reserve has helped us keep our earnings and investments stable and secure. They're, they're, they're just some badass women running their own small business. Uh, and so these, uh, thanks to the app, they can send, receive, and exchange currencies quickly and easily. How cool is that? Has anybody shopped here? Not yet? We should soon. Um, and then second to last, payroll. This is Adrian. Uh, he is in Colombia, uh, and, he, and he actually hires staff back in, in Venezuela. So he centralized payroll with reserve. Uh, it's been more effective for him, and even better rates for his suppliers without hurting, um, without hurting himself on the exchange rate. And this is, I don't know his name, but this is Up Studio Architecture. He looks like an architect, the way he's standing. Uh, he has an architecture office. Collaborators are in Venezuela. He pays them in reserve. Expedite delivery of their consp- contributions. That's great. Uh, and last one, Barb's. That's an awesome name, Barb's. Reserve has helped me, my company, so, or actually, this is almost like a reverse. Her company pays her in reserve, um, as opposed to being the payroll creator. So, love it. Thank you, Barb's. And last one, you see this on the website? Uh, we do actually do a lot of volume institutionally. Uh, we did, what you saw in those last examples were the consumer application. Um, large transactions, lightning speed, we have an awesome team working on this. Uh, I did look at some numbers. Again, this is a little out of date. It's not actually hundreds of millions of dollars. We're over, we're in the billion plus dollars happening at the institutional level already. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Just a couple, 
a couple quick use cases that we heard from our customers just Thursday. These stories were just from Thursday. And so closing out here, where does RPay go next? Share a few things. The first one seems kind of obvious with the protocol launch today. Protecting savings from inflation even better than just dollars. So our current approach with RSV and getting, getting that to our tokens and our tokens in the application. The next, growing your money. So we, had a, we have a sweet team. There's a bunch of avatars of team members. Yeah, a lot of them are here. And what you see in the video is uh, our first play at uh, buying tokenized assets. And so uh, they've made this beautiful, very seamless experience. Um, you might have even missed the first half of it. It goes that quickly. Um, and so this, this is, a, I think this is a video of buying Bitcoin. Um, and we're gonna, we now not just have a, a reserve stablecoin wallet, but you'll actually have uh, a, few di a few other digital assets. And just like that, a purchase has been made. Very beautiful, very seamless experience. That's coming out real soon. That'll be real fun. And what else do we have up our sleeves? A whole LATAM expansion. We have a, a, another whole group of people uh, working on going from not just our core our core, um, core countries right now, but there's a Mexico launch soon. What? Yeah, a lot of awesome work has been put on there. Uh, and and as, we, as we try to continue making money borderless, there's going to be a lot happening over the coming months right here. And... A bunch more, actually. I was told, Gabo was like, okay, you can't share this, you can't share this, you can't share this. But Wednesday night, you can hear all that. Yeah, he's like, not yet. He's like, he's like hold it out, for the, hold it out for, the, for the Rangers night. So we have, join us Wednesday, if you, if you haven't um, joined the waitlist yet, get a little QR code there. Um, and the RPA side is going to share a lot more of the future, both from the vision side and the, and the products and services we're building. All right. Gracias. Ciao. Oh, shoot. Super, thank you. All those people helping. Thank you.